Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching NDTV. In a significant development in the Muda scam case, Parvati, who is the wife of Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaiya, has now voluntarily surrendered 14 plots of land that were previously allotted to her by the authority. Now, as after she made the statement, Karnataka BJP took a dig at the Chief Minister, asking whether a thief becomes innocent as soon as he returns the stolen goods. Now, Siddharamaiya, meanwhile, has said that he respects his wife's decision and he has said that she had to suffer mental harassment due to the political vendetta that was pursued against him. That is what he has claimed. Now, Parvati decided to surrender these 14 sites that were allotted to her in Mysuru after the Enforcement Directorate yesterday booked Siddharamaya in connection with the Muda case. Remember, this decision to surrender the plots comes also in the, in the wake of FIR being registered with the Loka Yukta and the ED regarding land scam allocations made in the favour of the CM and his wife. So was this an afterthought? What took the Chief Minister so long to take this call? Is there really pressure building on him to resign? And is he going to resign? And how is the BJP looking at all of this? This is what we will discuss uh, tonight. Of course, we'll be joined by a panel of experts. But first, here's a report. Hours after the ED booked a money laundering case against Karnataka CM Siddharamaya, his wife Parvati, the controversial beneficiary of compensation plots in the alleged Muda scam, wrote a letter offering to surrender the 14 compensatory plots at the centre of the controversy back to Muda. The letter read, No house, plot or wealth is more important than my husband's honour, dignity and peace of mind. Please do not drag women of political families into the controversy to settle political scores. The move is aimed at both blunting the sharp political demand for his resignation and negating the damage to Siddharamiya's image as this is the strongest accusation of corruption against him in his political career. I don't know on, on what grounds money laundering. Nanprakara money laundering. But what is my role? That's being investigated. That's independent of returning the sites by the wife of the uh, or the person who has been beneficiary which they allege, but what matters is that the truth or veracity of the allegations that need to be done properly by being investigated need to be looked into. Meanwhile, the Lokayukta officials in Mysuru began inspecting Siddharamaya family's 3.16 acres of land that Muda acquired. The Muda chief will also seek legal advice on the restitution offer by the chief minister's wife. According to the procedure, action preparations busy Kanarka CM Siddharamaya had earlier refused to return the compensatory plots but has now reversed the decision. The return request may have no legal bearing now but Kanarka CM Siddharamaya will have to continue fighting both the financial as well as the political storm of the Muda case. With camera person Kumar Pratibha Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV. Okay, joining me now is uh, Shatabesh uh, Shivanna, who is a spokesperson of the Congress Party. We have Lakshmi Ashwin Gowda, who represents the BJP. We also have Ramakrishna Upadhyay, who is a senior journalist and also a political analyst. Uh, Mr. Shivanna, you know, this is a question all, we've been asking for a long time. First of all, thank you all of you for joining me on this broadcast. Uh, starting with you, uh, Mr. Shivanna, you know, when we talk about the 14 sites of land and the compensation, uh, and what Muda was saying, that there are no developed areas in Devanuru layout. That's what uh, we all saw. And in exchange of some prime lands, uh, uh, you know, these were provided in Vijayanagar. If the CM was so particular about his integrity and the fact that he has enjoyed that kind of reputation, 
why did the family insist on compensation and this whole decision to say that I don't want this, I'm giving it back, this announcement could have come much earlier. Now, see, now we are talking about a land that was given as a cultural gift to the wife of the chief minister by her own brother in 2010, right? In Kannada, we call it as Harshna Kunkma. And, you know, it's their land. I can pull out an entire legal chart and I can give you a legal opinion as to how they are the rightful owners of the property. Right from 2004 to 2010 to 2014, the gift deed, sale deed, conversion, everything is in their name. And then for the Muda to illegally acquire these sites and, uh, you know, carve out sites and uh, allot it to some random persons is prima facie illegal. Now, when three acres, 16 guttas of my land is taken away, without following due process of law by the Muda authorities, then where should the person who is aggrieved go? So they make a representation to the authority and the authority says, but listen, Mr. we Shivanya, can't give you land to, here. To even look at the CM's wife as an aggrieved person or a vulnerable person is really far-fetched because, you know, he's the chief minister. These are 14 prime yeah. lands. There was always a controversy about the denotification, whether it will belong to an SE person or not. So clearly there were so many controversies and this is something that your party could have uh, predicted or anticipated, isn't it? No, I mean, irrespective of whether he's the chief minister or not, there is a woman who has lost property that was gifted to her by her brother through which was given culturally. So she's the CM's now, once, wife once and he's the, been in politics no, no, for so second, long. No, no, one second. Let me, let me, let yes, me finish. Yes, finish, finish let, yes. let me finish. Please, and, and we are talking about a woman, you know, who found joy and happiness in supporting her husband's political growth by standing from a distance. She has never been seen or spotted in the public fora. She never insisted on any materialistic benefits and it is condemnable to drag her name and reputation, you know, for mere political gain. Acknowledging this, acknowledging this, realizing this, though the land legally belongs to her, not giving it away for a moment that I'm legally entitled to these plots, she acknowledged that the political uh, games and she made an independent decision to hand over the sites, to surrender the sites. And let mind you, the CM makes a categorical statement, though in law I am correct, though in law I am entitled to compensation, these compensatory sites were given by the previous BJP dispensation. We didn't ask them to give it in this particular Vijayanagar in an upmarket area. Right. We said, you have taken our land, please return whatever is possible. And the BJP decision, the dispensation takes a decision to allocate this particular land. How, okay, that, how that's an important solved? point. Let me ask the BJP spokesperson here. Uh, Ms. Gowda, you know, Karnataka has been the land of adjustment politics. You know, we have seen that even in the distribution of tickets. And finally, this is, uh, you know, this is coming back to you in some ways, although the scrutiny is on the chief minister, the fact that the land was uh, allotted to him in the BJP regime and that Muda, uh, you know, has been under scrutiny. And there are various land deals that have often come about not just in Muda case, but also there are these beneficiaries across parties. There are, you know, be it DK Shivakumar or BSY. Uh, there are these favours that politicians keep doing to each other, at least in the state of Karnataka. Do you think that this is also the time for you, for the, for the BJP to think beyond adjustment politics? Because otherwise this case may not have the kind of impact that you are hoping for. Thank you, ma'am. The attainment of the moral turpitude of Mr. Sidramaya is so much obvious, not to the just, not just to the people of Karnataka, but to the whole India. And now he is becoming a blot to the Indian democracy because only because he has always he has been telling he has been referring himself as the champion of the social justice, champion of the Hindu people, champion of the Dalit people. It is so shame on him that he has plucked away the land which is supposed to belong to his CST people, and he is involved, and his family members are directly involved in the scam which is to the tune of 4,000 to 5,000 crores. Now, once the Enforced Directorate has made an entry, he has uh, become so much alert and he has become so much restless and uh, he has become so much alert that he has prompted his wife to write a letter to return the land. What was he doing all these days? And taking the morality and taking the moral high ground. Why didn't he return all these days? Why did he do all that show and cry? And it doesn't mean that he will miss that legal trial. He will have to duly miss the legal legal trial. It 
he has prompted his wife to write a letter. But Mr. Kaurda, let me Muda. also ask you. I mean, I point they noted. Have, yes, ma'am, point noted. But let me also <laughs> let me also ask you. This Muda controversy has been playing out for the last many months. But Sidharamaiah has repeatedly denied the charges. The Congress doesn't seem to be in a mood uh, to really force him to resign. He is saying that he is being targeted politically. He is a non-dominant, non-lingayat, non-vokaliga face. You know, an ahinda face. So clearly, there are limitations to your attacks also. And you know, will your victory just end at the CM's wife writing a letter? to Muda because it doesn't look like he is going to resign now, at least now. See, if you see the history of Congress, they have made the Mr. Bangarapa to resign. They have made Mr. K.P. Jarj uh, to resign. They have made Mr. Nagendra in the Valmiki Corporation's camp to resign first and to face the trial later. Why can't the Mr. Sidramaya take the same stand? He is the so-called the guardian of the constitution. Why is he behaving so unconstitutional? Okay, okay, Mr. Rupakia. Yes, sir. You heard it's both not. the political people speak out what uh, you know what was on their mind. As an expert, do you see that there has been some damage, you know, some significant damage to the personal image and reputation of Siddharamaiah? And do you see him stepping down anytime soon? And what kind of social, moral, political pressure is he facing in the state, not just by his own political bosses, by but also people? You know, Vasudha, I think till last evening, he was uh, confident that he will, uh, you know, just uh, sail through somehow. But once the enforcement directorate came into the picture and they've registered a money laundering case, I think that is when the CM's office or the CM's coterie panicked. So, you know, it was around 7.15 when the announcement was made by the enforcement directorate coming in. And about 10.15, the letter of Parvati was released to the media saying that she's surrendering the sites. This he could have done three months back before all this became public and, you know, became a controversy. He could have said, you know, this is, I don't know what my wife and her brother have done and I'm not involved in, in any way. And he said, if there is any irregularity, I would uh, like to, you know, surrender there. He never did that until, you know, the, uh, the ED entered yesterday. That is point number two. Point number one. Point number two is that, you know, they know once the ED enters, they will go into the entire gamut of the scandal that Muda is involved in. More than 5,000 crores is what the, you know, the allegation is against the Muda. That, I mean, Mr. Siddharam's wife is not the only, uh, you know, beneficiary. There have been hundreds of other beneficiaries and all that will now have to come out. And there is a lot of talk about, you know, illegal money being involved in acquiring the sites and then, you know, giving the alternate sites and all that. And secondly, Mr. Sidharamaya's claim or Mrs. Sidharamaya's claim of, you know, compensatory land itself is in a big question because she got it from a brother in 2010 who bought it in 2004. But the but Muda had acquired the so-called 3.16 land, 1.3.16 acres of land in 2001 itself and developed it into a layout. There was no agricultural land left hmm. when she made the claim in 2014 before the uh, no Muda saying that you have to compensate me with the you know, 14 sites. Right. So there was no. I mean, it's, it's the whole thing has come out in the High Court. All these documents are available. Now, he, real, Mr. Sidharamaya realizes that, you know, once the uh, ED enters into the picture, uh, you know, he cannot manage the investigation. Because mm -hmm. as long as it's Loka Ekta, he can still manage because the police, uh, you know, conducting the investigation for Loka Ekta is controlled by the CM's office. Right. Mr. Shivanna, you know, the there are very valid points that Mr. Upadhyay is making. Is it because Mr. Sidharamaya thinks that now the investigation has gone beyond his control? Because if you look at, you know, his actions, he moved the Karnataka High Court, challenging the governor's decision for his prosecution. But the court did, you know, co court held that, you know, an, a governor can independently give permission to prosecute a chief minister or even a minister if there's a likelihood of bias. That's what I remember the court saying. Do you think that the Congress underestimated the reach of courts, Loka Yukta, even for that matter, ED? Could you do you think that your party could have handled this better? No, firstly, I would like to rebut what Mr. Upadhyay was saying on facts. You know, today we have, the technology has advanced to such an extent that we have satellite images from 2003, 2006, 2021. And he says with so much rigor 
that the sites were already acquired, developed, and whatnot, sir, roads were built in 19. Once the again, sir, I did, I did not interrupt. I did not interrupt you. Please give me that courtesy. I did not interrupt you. Please give me that courtesy. Okay, let him, let him finish, Mr. Uh, Padhyay. I'll come back to you, sir. I'll come back. Nine, to you. He says the roads were built. Everything was done. 19 people were allotted the sites. These very 19 people in the year 2016 filed a writ petition saying we had deposited money into the Muda for allotment. When we went and saw the lands, there is absolutely nothing. It's just agricultural land. And that matter is pending. I will place it before you. And while I maintain that this is a political conspiracy, let, uh, we are not scared of the enforcement directorate. Rather, I would call it the enforcement directorate as a branch of the Bharatiya Janata Party, or more appropriately, the election demolition branch of the Bharatiya Janata Party, whose modus operandi is to, uh, you know, swoop in where there are elected, democratically elected governments, and they demolish them. And, uh, you know, from 2014 till 2024, if you see, they only target leaders of the political opposition. But sir, what about the courts here? And the courts one are second, saying that second. this is too bleak a contention, meriting any acceptance, and that, you know, Siddharamaya cannot be just the person behind the curtain. So clearly, it's the court also there, right? So, of no, course, the investigation see, has to flow out second. now. One second. Now, the court only said, please make way for an investigation. We have never shied away from an investigation. But you see no, the but, manner but in which... But you have also removed the second, power of CBI to probe into, you know, so whatever is, uh, you know, whatever the state government can do, you're doing that, right? Isn't that, uh, we, isn't that something? We see, let, let, let me complete. We have never shied away from an investigation. I don't know why people don't believe that Lokayukta is an independent agency. They're doing their job. We are the ones who constituted a PN Desai inquiry commission who's looking into all, all the irregularities within the MUDA and the, the, this particular CM's thing was never a part of the reference made by the, the to the inquiry commission and now the, how the governor has acted in haste, how the ED has swooped in, how, how the CBI wants to come in is all indicative of political conspiracy to okay. destabilize a democratically elected government. Okay, Mr. Upadhyay, you wanted to say something. democratically elected chief minister yes, Mr. who Upadhyay. is a champion of the people. Okay, Mr. Upadhyay, you wanted to say something, sir. Mr. the simple judicial inquiry ordered by the chief minister reports to him. And, the, you know, the, uh, the, the set of uh, questions that how are given also by the government. And how is he supposed to be independent? So that is not an independent body, first of all. What and second, he is a retired high court judge. Honorable Justice Minister. Okay, let, 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 let him finish, Mr. Shivana, let him finish. Yeah. And, okay. and the Congress spokesman is not able to contest the fact that the high court upheld the decision of the governor to order this investigation. Yes. He just did it stop us out of the investigation. The judge said nobody else without the kind of power that the Chief Minister had could have got this kind of a compensatory land. Hmm. And, and, and also, okay, no, then, the then, judgment may, mentions may please these are worth, these are worth 55. Let him finish, I'll come to you. Yeah. 55.80 crores compared to the what is the value of the land which was surrendered? That was 3.24 lakhs. So, what, where is the comparison between the two? So that is why the investigation yes. has been ordered. Okay. I don't think you can, you know, show over all these you know, facts. Oh, absolutely. Mr. Shivan, last 30 seconds to you, sir. A, a quick rebuttal. You yes. know, we were only questioning the validity of the governor in according prior approval or sanction. So you called in, him an agent of the RSS. The you called him, you know, yes. a lot of names. But yes. the court really sort of like, you know, put in some very strong words there. No, no, the court... The court very categorically quashed the sanction accorded under 218 of the BNSS and only upheld 17A prior approval. They said, let the matter all. be investigated. Please, sir, please, sir, don't interrupt me. Hmm. And the, the fact of the matter... Why, why, I don't understand why you are interrupting me. No, we sir, have a legal by, battle. Let the investigation happen. Don't threaten us. Don't intimidate us with Who's the ED, you, CBI man? and what not. Okay. And... and Okay, nobody completely out of time, now. completely out nobody, of time. Nobody has answered okay. till now. Okay, uh, Ms. Gowda, would you like to say something? Last two sentences, perhaps. The allotment. It's an high time for Mr. Sidramaya to not to be so much intransigent, not to be so much recalcitrant, and to take a moral high ground and to resign first and face the trial, if at all, if he respects the constitution. No, then, then you should if ask he's, uh, Mr. Kumar Swami to resign. It cannot be anti-constitutional. It cannot be so much obdurant Absolutely. for not to resign and to face the trial. Okay. So we all request and we all urge for him to resign first and face okay. the okay. trial. Okay, my last but question to you, Mr. Shivana. Do you think this is time for Mr. Sitaramaya to resign? Is there going to be a rethink on that aspect as well? Because what happened today clearly seems to be an afterthought. 
Mr. Sidramaya enjoys the benefit and support of 136 democratically elected MLAs and the entire cabinet, including the high command, as well as the people. No okay. law mandates that he must resign merely because of registration of, of an FIR. Mm -hmm. And that will not happen. The people are with him. Okay. And Thank please ask the BJP spokesperson to ask or demand for the resignation of Mr. Kumar Swami, who is facing a charge sheet, okay. who is facing a prosecution. Okay, thank you and so much all of you for joining me on money. this broadcast. Sidramaya's wife, Parvati, has written to Muda asking it to cancel the sale deeds to of the alternate sites that were allotted to her. This is a day after ED registered a case of alleged uh, money laundering against the Karnataka Chief Minister Sidramaya in connection with the ongoing Muda case. Clearly, this is a case that is going to be long drawn legally or politically. We'll keep tracking that for you. Uh, but now, time for a short break. More, more news and updates on the other side.